Hi, Taras here from the Top Shelf Aquatics Farm. One of my favorite parts of aquaculture, whether or not be at an ornamental coral farm such as this, or a commercial farm over off the coast of Visayas in the Philippines, is that aquaculture, no matter what you're growing or why, has so many intersections in all forms of life in our society. So today we're gonna to be talking about the history of Gracilaria and all the things that it's done for not only reefers, but humanity as a whole. See, Gracilaria contains a wonderful compound known as agar. Agar was first derived many, many, many hundreds of years ago. Some say in China, some say in Japan, but long story short, agar allowed us to make all kinds of thickened foods from beer and yogurt, all the way up to all kinds of things into the toothpaste, shampoos, into the postmodern age. One of the other things agar allowed us to do was purposefully cultivate microorganisms, bacteria, algae, fungi, you name it. And because of agar, we have been able to innovate medically and scientifically in ways that have launched us well out of the dark ages of centuries past. Now, where does that come in with Gracilaria? You see, before the Second World War, pretty much all of the world's agar came from a macroalgae called gelidium that was only harvested and processed by the Japanese. Now, this changed throughout the First World War, but definitely during the Second, when Japan cut off the rest of the world from agar supplies. When Japan did that, all medical research came to a screeching halt. Now, there was a rat race and a rapid race that was launched to find alternatives to Japanese gelidium. And that's where our old friend Gracilaria comes into play. You see, all across on the other side of the world, there were tons and tons of Irish immigrants landing in the United States. And they depended on something back home called Irish moss. Irish moss, which could be boiled down and used to fortify milk and thicken milk and clarify beer and all these other things that the Irish loved, loved it for. And it was discovered that Gracilaria has agar. Sometimes you need to process it with some alkaline hydrolysis, but once we figured out how to get agar from Gracilaria, all of the Irish immigrants, which lived down on the East Coast of the United States, which were adept seaweed farmers, they could cultivate distribute and grow seaweed wherever they wanted and all of a sudden their nation needed them to grow more of the good stuff and because they already had a background knowledge of what Gracilaria was and how to produce it the United States was able to completely replace their dependency on Japanese agar. So that's one of the many reasons why I love working with all these organisms here at Top Shelf Aquatics. Every single snail, crab, tuft of macroalgae all has hidden molecular secrets that could someday provide a glorious new future, provide beer, yogurt, toothpaste, and shampoo to generations to come. So, Gracilaria, have it in your tank, use it to suck up your nitrates and phosphates, drink a beer, and think of, uh, think of all the things that can happen.